Hello and welcome to your very own tailor-made auto show Green Signal. In every episode of Green Signal, I review a car and a bike. And in today's episode, in the car segment, you want to know which car we have for you? Just wait and watch. Alright, so the wait is over. The car that we have for you in today's episode of Green Signal is none other than Hyundai's baby. The Hyundai's baby car, Hyundai Eon. So let's get into the details of Hyundai Eon. The Hyundai Eon is loosely based on Santro and the engine has been derived from the long-standing Epsilon engine. Now the design team has gone all out and has delivered a number of wedges and curves in the name of fluidic design that has given this machine a different styling which this end of the market hasn't seen so far. Hyundai's latest fluidic design has rubbed off well on the car and it comes across as a modern car which makes a style statement. The front has a typical hexagonal family grill and many may mistake it to be the item at the first glance. The headlamps swoop all the way back to the hood and prominent wheel arches are a part of the fluidic philosophy. The sports variant comes with triangular fork lamps. The Magna on the other side has provision to get it done as an aftermarket fitment. Bulging wheel arches add muscle and complement the design. The side has numerous sculpted lines which form the basics of the fluidic design. The waistline rises at the rear door to give a sporty modern look while the roof line slopes slightly towards the rear. Notice the integrated rear spoiler, it's standard across all variants. The rear bumper bulges outwards but it's a rear tail lamp cluster which looks gorgeous. High mounted stop lamp is integrated with the spoiler and there is no mistaking the Eon from behind. It may be misunderstood for the i up upfront but it has its own personality in the end, quite literally. The interiors of Hyundai Eon is by far the best in this segment. Never before in a car of this particular price point we have seen such good, extremely good quality interiors. Get inside the Hyundai Eon and it oozes of quality. Feel fresh interiors, great plastic quality and the two-tone beige and greyish black combination just enhances the appeal. No uneven panel gaps and fabulous fit and finish. It won't be out of place to mention that the Alto, the largest selling car in the segment, does not even come close to matching the quality. The hexagonal theme is carried onto the dashboard, which has a futuristic sporty design. A large storage area is placed above the glow box for odds and ends. The steering feels good to hold with a thumb rest. Notice the center of the dashboard. The central space has been catered to keep idles and is called the DT space by Hyundai. The top and sports variant get a three-spoke steering. The air conditioner is very efficient and chill the cabin in no time at all. Without any doubts, the AC is far more efficient than the competition. Both front and rear seats are a mix of fabric and art leather. The front seats incorporate an integrated headrest and are comfortable. Back support is adequate but due to the size of the car, the seat width is sufficient for an average built person and a heftier person might end up wanting for more weight. A car of this segment cannot be expected to be an outright handler. But Hyundai Eon is a bit different. I mean, I was pleasantly surprised by the high speed stability of the car. At 110 km, the car was pretty stable, pretty smooth. Start the ignition and the engine settles into an idle. Engine vibration does creep inside the cabin due to the three cylinder motor, but it's not too much. Hyundai has incorporated a counter balancer to keep the vibrations at bay. This three cylinder motor delivers reasonable performance but gets too loud at higher revs. NVH levels could have been better. Braking is by far the best in the segment. Though there is no ABS offered on the Eon, not even as an option, the brakes are crisp and bite easily. 
braking from 120 km per hour, the car was quite stable getting to zero. No sideways movement, stopping in a straight line. Overall impressive braking performance. The Eon is powered by a 3 cylinder 814 cc motor which churns out 55 bhp at 5500 rpm and 75 nm torque at 4000 rpm. It's effectively the 1.1 liter Santro engine Santa cylinder. This not only cuts down the manufacturing cost but also gives the Eon class leading fuel efficiency of 21.1 km per liter which is ARAI certified. The Hyundai Eon has truly shaken up this segment in terms of customer satisfaction. Plus, it offers the best in class quality, fuel efficiency and truly modern styling and amenities as well. But I must say, in fact I can say that it's the best buy for the buck at this moment. That's it. back now let's move on to our next segment which is a segment for the common man yes the commuter bike segment so in the commuter bike segment today we have a stunner it's actually the stunner the honda stunner which is rebatched by hero motor corp into the hero igniter so let's have a look When Hero and Honda went their separate ways, it was decided that the new company, the Hero Motor Corp, will share technology and the products with the Japanese manufacturer till 2014. Now this igniter is the product of that decision. It's a rebatched stunner, but it's an awesome machine. As said earlier, the Hero Igniter is a rebatched Honda Stunner. So there aren't much differences that we can say about. But still then, the Hero Igniter sports a quarter fairing that gives it a sporty look. Now it has got matte black painted engine with heat shield. The Hero Igniter comes with split seats, red painted rear shock absorbers and some snazzy graphics to complete the sporty look. Now it's the very front end that takes a departure from the Stunner styling. The Hero Stunner, I mean the Igniter sports a wider front headlight and a different fairing visor to give the new bike a different look. The Hero Igniter, thanks to its sporty aspiration, gets a split seat. The rider seat offers adequate support and comfort. Surprisingly, the pillion seat is a bit more on the harder side and could have done better with a bit more cushioning. Now the handlebar and the foot pegs are positioned in such a way that the rider sits upright. The pillion gets a single unit grab rail which is big enough to hang on to or held on to. The pass beam switch on the igniter switch gear is a bit oddly placed and it is quite a Herculean task to press the switch. Not a deal breaker but it is surely something that Hero needs to look into. The bike gets a new instrument cluster. The instrument panel comes with an analog taco and the speedo unit is courtesy a white backlit digital display. The instruments have a good font size and the instrument console manages to look quite upmarket. Surprisingly, the bike gets an analog fuel gauge instead of a digital bar type unit. A point to be noted is that the Spiro display remains backlit even when the lights have not been switched on. As expected, the Hero Igniter makes use of the 125cc 11bhp motor that's mated with the 5-speed gearbox. The Hero Motor Corp, which has been an undisputed leader in the Indian commuter bike segment, has actually retuned the engine for better city riding. The updated engine has a good amount of punch in the lower rev range and quick getaways from traffic stops are an easy deal. However, the performance starts fading away as you enter the mid-range and is almost non-existent once you reach the top end. Anything above 5500 rpm and the motor starts sounding like it's pleading for some mercy. 
Wishing to touch 100 km per hour with two abort is like betting on the Indian soccer team to win the World Cup. Yeah, truly. As with all hero products, playing between the igniter's gear ratios is easy and smooth and seldom does a false neutral make an appearance. It's a second gear which allows you to really play with all the juice from the motor and the bike can chug along at city speeds in second and third gear all day long. One of the best parts of this bike is its ride and handling equation. The igniter soaks in most of the average size craters with quite an uplow and when it comes to the biggest of the path holes that you know the rider might get a bit uncomfortable. World over, the manufacturers have been trying to strike a balance between ride and handling and it hardly ever happens that a bike comes with equally high ride and handling capabilities. The Hero Igniter, however, is one of those few bikes that not just absorb most of the irregularities with considerable ease but can also be thrown into corners without much of a fear. That said, the Igniter is no sports bike, better remember that. At city speeds, the bike comes across as being very nimble and can be easily flicked around for playing the lane splitter. The Igniter comes with a drum brake at the rear and a disc up front. After test riding, I felt overall the brakes are adequate for the bike of this size and power. But more braking power is never enough, right? The Hero Igniter can be easily dismissed as a rebadged Honda Stunner, but there is more to what it seems to the eye and I think I have finally found out the difference between the two bikes. I'll tell you what it is. The Honda Stunner has been one of the very well sorted out bikes in the commuter segment, in the 125cc segment and has been one of the highest selling bikes. Now Hero Motor Corp has made this bike ignited and they have successfully tweaked the engine for better city rides. Now we can't say that Hero Igniter is leagues ahead of the Honda Stunner but there are certain things that makes it a bit better than the Honda Stunner. And that's the instrument console and the engine optimized for better city driving and of course better network. So. It's your take, it's your call, whether the Hero, Igniter or the Honda Stunner. You might remember that in the last episode I told you about an automotive show that's happening in Cochin. Well, right now I am at the SBT Asianet Auto Expo 2013 in association with MRF and Cardano. Yeah, let's go inside and check out. Apart from what we see regularly on our roads, we have something very different, something unique here at the 2013 Auto Expo, Asian at SBD Auto Expo. One such car is the MRF Formula 1600 car that we have here. It's fitted with slick tires, the EZLO tires. The car is designed by Elan Motorsports USA and it has a maximum BSP of 120. Do you know that Harley Davidson is celebrating their 110th anniversary this year? Usually, the celebrations would kick off at Milwaukee, USA, where Harley Davidson has their headquarters. But this time, for the first time ever in the history of Harley Davidson, the celebrations got kicked off out of USA, the United States. You know where it happened? It happened in India, in Goa. So here, at the Harley Davidson Pavilion at the SBT Asian and Auto Expo 2013, you have some eye candy.
Nowadays, almost every car manufacturer has got their own MUVs. But are they the real MUVs? I mean, the real off-roaders? Well, now I am at the Asianet Pavilion, the Auto Expo 2013, the SBD Auto Expo 2013, and I am at the pavilion of a company called Polaris. It's a US-based company, and they make the real SUVs. Now these cars, I mean rather these multi-utility vehicles can go literally through anywhere. They can go through sand, they can go through slush, they can go through rock, and they can go through even water. And they can climb to an angle of up to 70. Alright, so with that I wind up this episode of Green Signal. It's Govind Krishna signing off from this greenery behind me and this is your very own tailor-made auto show, Green Signal.